Welcome to Synergens Berhad. Located in Bukit Tengah, Penang, our operations are based in a row of industrial lots with an aggregate built-up area of 22,800 square feet. As an electronics manufacturing solutions provider and appointed distributor of more than 20 brands, we have been offering our integrated solutions under the SIP technology brand since 2004. Our solutions, specializing in surface mount technology, SMT, caters to the electronics and semiconductor industries. Synergens is an established specialist in the commissioning of integrated production lines. Our customer base comprises of over 100 electronics and semiconductor manufacturers, service providers and brand owners operating within the PCBA assembling and advanced semiconductor packaging space. These integrated production line systems can be customized and are typically used in the assembly of advanced semiconductor packaging products and printed circuit board according to customers' requirements. Our expertise also extends to the automation of production facilities where we are able to incorporate smart factory solutions that integrate and connect the processes within a production facility. Smart factory solutions that we offer include real-time warehouse management, automated storage system for parts preparation, automated storage system for parts replenishment, production planning and scheduling solution, production monitoring solution, command and control center. Customers looking to upgrade or modify existing integrated production line systems can come to us as we distribute machinery, equipment and tools to support their needs. Brands we distribute include ASM, ITW, Koyang, Co, Inertech and Newtech among others. Synergens has received several awards and recognition from its suppliers for outstanding performance, sales and distribution over the years. Supported by an experienced and technically strong management team, the dedicated employees have helped the group to maintain and grow its business. In our endeavours to create long-term value for all our customers, our solutions are mainly viewed as ESG compliant as they are geared towards minimising operational issues in production processes and real-time tracking of inventory management as well as automation and integration of the processes to achieve optimal output and energy efficiency. With the growing emphasis on business sustainability across the industries, we are committed to developing and introducing solutions that automate processes in production facilities, as well as real-time insight and monitoring solutions, which in turn reduces labour costs and human errors. I enjoy working here as it is meaningful work that brings value to me as a person and for my skill set. I've been given opportunities to grow professionally in a work environment that is nurturing. At Synergen, teamwork is important and we all work very closely together. Synergens has had an established presence in Malaysia since 2004. Over the years, Synergens ventured to Thailand and Vietnam, which are now key contributors to our growth. We have had a great business relationship with SIP technology for a number of years now and are very satisfied with the quality of the service we have received. SIP technology has proven themselves to be a valuable partner and we are very impressed by its engineering team who are very knowledgeable and helpful. Hi, I'm Anulak Kamajai, Senior Engineering Manager of Thailand. SIP technology is our prior here in Thailand more than 10 years back uh, and I'm very happy with the great sales and technical support here uh, they give very high performance of technical 
service and also uh, they are very customer oriented I'm very happy with that and thank you Synergens, an established electronics manufacturing solutions provider with the proven technical expertise relevant to the changing technological landscape of the electronics and semiconductor manufacturers. All right, uh, let me do a round of introduction. Hi, we have Mr. Light Inchoi, the CEO, in the one in blue, Kong Chalong, uh, Light Tim Long, and Go Musian, the key management of Synergens. Over to you guys to start the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen for participating in our corporate presentation for Synergence Braha. Uh, um, just uh, showing you the disclaimer for this uh, presentation. Here is our table of content. Uh, we will be uh, elaborating on the uh, offering structure and timeline, company overview, key investment highlights, future expansion plans and financial overview. So for today's presenter, uh, I'm Mr. Lai, uh, the Chief Executive Officer of Synergence Brahat. And together with me is uh, Mr. Gaur Munswen, which is the uh, Chief Financial Officer of Synergence Brahat. So let me just run through uh, with you section one, which is our offering structure and timeline. For our IPO listing, we will be uh, listed in the ACE market. And for this listing exercise, um, the company will be issuing 100 million new share, which 25%, which is 25 million, will be offered to the Malaysian public. And our company is Sharia Compliance. The indicative IPO timeline is as follow. Uh, opening of the application for the IPO is on the 29th of April, 2022. Closing application for the IPO shares will be at 11 May, 2022. The balloting of the application of the issue shares will be on the 13 May, 2022. The allotment will be at 23 May, 2022. And the listing will be at 24 May, 2022. Section two is our company overview. We have commenced our business operational since 2004, and we are established electronic manufacturing solution provider. This is uh, different from the uh, normal EMS, which is the electronic manufacturing services. We are the electronic manufacturing solution provider because we provide these solutions to the EMS company. So our key managements have more than 26 years of experience in the SMT manufacturing industry. We have very long standing uh, business relationship with our suppliers and also with our 100 plus uh, customers which comprise of IDM, OSET and the EMS. We are well positioned uh, to benefit from the continued growth of the ENS industries in Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam. And you can see that the SMT manufacturing uh, industries will grow uh, with a compound annual growth rate of 7.28% respectively in Malaysia, Vietnam, and Thailand. Let's have a quick run through on our history and key milestone. Uh, in 2004, SIP technology commences the operation. 2005, we venture into the production line, uh, customization of the production line processes. 
And in 2004, we were appointed uh, the distributor for ITWEAE, uh, 2006 with uh, ASM, and uh, 2007 with uh, COPE. 2007 to 2011, uh, this is the time where we actually uh, expand into uh, Thailand with uh, setting up a collaborating uh, effort with SIP Thailand. 2008, we are appointed the Koyang distributor. 2009, we secured the first uh, order from our Vietnam uh, customers, which is with us until today. 2010, we expanded our uh, Malaysian facilities. Uh, and 2011, uh, we started to work with SIP Vietnam in Vietnam. So from 2018 to 2019, we venture into the smart factory uh, solution offering. So in 2018, uh, we managed to secure a contract with uh, one uh, key Vietnamese uh, conglomerate uh, to provide the smart factory solutions to manufacture the smartphone. So uh, in 2019, we secure another major contract uh, with the uh, same, I would say the same customers in Vietnam to further enhance their production capacity for the smartphone uh, production. In 2021, we incorporated uh, Synergence uh, Brahat to be our holding company uh, to embark on our journey uh, for the IPO. So if you look at our product categories uh, on the uh, solutions that we offered, the first section, segment is the uh, integrated solution. So the integrated solution is where we uh, have the end-to-end -end design, uh, develop and commissioning of the Russian uh, line for the electronic assembly the industries. And on the other segment, uh, we have the uh, individual machinery, equipments and tools uh, sales. This is where uh, we sell the individual machineries uh, to our clients uh, for them to enhance or to replace their current production lines. And we also offer the after sales technical support, uh, which uh, will cover the maintenance upgrade calibration. Our on site technical personnel support, which uh, we offer 24 7 uh, technical support to our clients and also uh, some PCBA uh, repair services. So as you can see, in terms of the uh, segmental revenue breakdown, the integrated solutions um, was very uh, high in 2018 and 19. Um, but in 2020 and 2021, uh, we see a little bit of uh, downtrend uh, on, this, on that segment due to the fact that uh, we are unable to travel to the overseas market to perform our uh, solutions uh, integration. But uh, with that being said, uh, our growth for the individual machineries during the uh, COVID year, which is 2020 and 2021, was on the rise. So we actually sell a lot of equipments to our existing customers and also new customers for upgrades and for uh, individual enhancements of the production line. And you can see uh, from the uh, revenue breakdown in terms of uh, geographical, Malaysia actually see a rise uh, during the uh, pandemic uh, year, uh, whereas uh, Vietnam uh, was on the low side and Thailand uh, started off uh, low in uh, 2020, but it climbed back up uh, to, uh, to a spike in terms of the growth uh, from 7.8% to 20.8%. Uh, going forward, uh, with the borders open up, uh, we expect uh, the contribution from the overseas market uh, will be increased. So our services, if you can see over here uh, on these slides, is actually the typical uh, SMT production line uh, used in the uh, electronics and semiconductor industries. So this line consists of a conveyor, uh, solar paste printer, solar paste inspection, SMT placement machines, reflow oven, optical uh, inspection systems, 
and also the uh, backhand conveyor. So this is a very typical line, uh, but uh, what we do is that we have ventured out from these primary SMT production processes into the secondary SMT processes, where we are able to offer the rest of the uh, equipment to complement the primary process. And further, after the secondary processes, we are also able to offer box built uh, assembly processes and also packaging processes. Uh, what you didn't see over here is actually the uh, the warehouse processes as well, we do offer. So you can come to us as a one-stop solution. We will offer you uh, from the warehouse in, raw material to warehouse out, complete box build. Yeah? So this is our company offering in terms of our solutions and our services. So which segment of uh, EMS industry do we cover? Okay, so this is just to give you a snapshot of uh, what type of equipments uh, we are able to offer in this respective segment. So we started off with the uh, die attached to substrate. This is where we have the equipments to pick up the bare dies from the wafer and place it into the advanced semiconductor packaging substrate. And together with this is that uh, we will also place all the necessary microchips to form the uh, advanced semiconductor packaging substrate. So this advanced semi semiconductor packaging substrates will then be transferred to the uh, EMS company where they will basically put uh, this advanced semiconductor packaging substrate together with other electronic components to form up the uh, PCBA, which is the printer circuit board assembly. This printer circuit board assembly will then be assembled uh, into the finished goods, which can be a smartphone, can be a laptop, can be a MRI machines, can be a telecommunication tower, can be a EV car. So as long as there's electronics uh, uh, so-called product uh, that's been offered in the market, uh, if you open up the product, I would say majority of it will have a printer circuit board assembly built inside. Yeah, so this is what are the uh, equipments that we actually offer to the ENS industries. So if you look at our customer base, we have a very long uh, standing uh, customer base over the years. Since the day we incorporated, um, some of the customers has been with us since day one. Customer A is actually uh, a well-known uh, electronics EMS company in Penang and they are listed in New York Stock Exchange. We also have customer B, which is also from the US, listed in NASDAQ and they have a very uh, big installed uh, base in Penang. Customer C is a company that builds uh, medical devices, uh, industries and automotive devices for the respective customers. Okay. Customer A to E is actually EMS uh, players in, in our region. And customer D, uh, they are a uh, Taiwanese uh, owned company, but listed in the uh, both Thailand and also in uh, Taiwan uh, stock exchange. They are the major uh, players in the power and thermal management solutions. And customer E is the life science uh, instrument uh, EMS which is listed in the Switzerland Stock Exchange. Okay, they, they are one of the subsidiary of the Life Science Group that provide uh, medical devices to the uh, medical industries. So if you look at uh, our top five customers, the contributions are in uh, 2018 is 76.4%, uh, 2021 is 61.1%. Yeah. So let me just uh, highlight to you is that uh, for Synergis Berhat, we do not uh, have uh, exposure to a single sector uh, industry. For us is that we are in the electronics and semiconductors uh, industries, but uh, our sectors is not limited to a single segment, but we are covered the entire spectrum of the uh, ENS. So if you look at our top five customers uh, from year to year, it actually changes uh, the ranking uh, from year to year. So that uh, we also covered uh, different sector at different years that you can see some growth. And then uh, majority you can see over here, we put various sector globally is because these are all the global EMS players where they produce products for a lot of sectors. 
Yeah, so all these things you can see over here, the year of relationship that we have with our top five uh, customers over the four, last four years. It uh, ranges uh, from one, which is the smartphone, which is the new customer to us, but they invested heavily in the smart factory. And also we have covered uh, the various uh, uh, so-called key customers for more than 10 years, you can see yeah, from this chart. So what we can conclude from here is that we are well positioned to benefit from the ENS growth with a highly diversified uh, customer base. And we covered uh, these uh, booming industries uh, ranging from life science, EV, IoT, and 5G products. So this also limit our exposure to a single sector uh, seasonal uh, changes. So I'll come to section three, which is the key investment highlight. So this key investment highlight, you can see the five strengths of our company. I will go in details in the next two slides. The first one is uh, our technical capability to provide manufacturing solutions that are relevant to the changing technology landscape of the ENS industries. Okay, as you know, in the ENS industries, technology keep evolving uh, basically every few months to a year. They'll be having some new type of uh, trends, new type of technology that is, that is popping up. So we basically have the capability and the knowledge to keep up with those trends. And we are be uh, so-called uh, leveraging on our experience to develop and to introduce new range of solutions to, uh, to cater for all these uh, changes. Okay, so with that being said, uh, you can look at our uh, proven track records. So uh, we've been having a lot of uh, repeat orders from a lot of our customers, and uh, we also began to offer our smart factory solutions since uh, two thousand eighteen. The second key point uh, is the uh, proven track records. As you can see, our major customers are all MNCs. As you can know, uh, as you will know, the MNCs have very stringent uh, requirements for their processes and also for their uh, procurement. So in order for us to uh, have a long-term uh, business relationship with all these MNCs, we have to meet all these stringent requirements uh, year to year. And uh, our ability to uh, retain this MNC is basically is our testaments of our engineering capability and our solution quality and our customer services and proven track records that we've been uh, servicing the uh, SMT industries. For point number three, uh, established network have reputable suppliers that offer a wide array of machineries, equipment, and tools. We have a long-standing business relationship with all our suppliers. Uh, our top five suppliers are, have a business relationship with us from ranging from five to uh, 17 years. And as of today, Synergen's uh, supplier base uh, comprises of 54 suppliers, mainly international brand owners and manufacturers of machineries, equipment, and tools. With all this uh, close uh, working relationship with our suppliers, we are able to build a very reliable and quality solution for our customers to offer them a wide array of product solutions and processes. The next point uh, is number four. Uh, we are well positioned to benefit from the growing ENS industries in Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam. As you can see, uh, the growth rate uh, for Malaysia uh, going forward uh, from 2022 to 2024, we are looking at a 7.2 uh, compound annual growth rate. Uh, for Vietnam and Thailand, uh, you see that it's even higher. It's at 8% for that country, for these two countries. Okay. So this actually gives us a very good uh, position that we cover uh, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Thailand to enjoy the growth rate that is, that is uh, coming over here, the uh, reason why of this growth rate is also because of the trade war that is happening between the China and the US. So there's a lot of uh, manufacturing companies uh, in China uh, adopting the plus one uh, con this uh, so-called setup. Uh, 
So plus one setup meaning is that they have the manufacturing plant in China, but they will set up another one out of China to cater for the uh, export industries. Yeah. So with that being said, uh, there's a we've been seeing the trend uh, for the past two years. A lot of the outflow uh, from China um, projects are actually coming into Southeast Asia, especially to Malaysia, Vietnam, and Thailand. So this will continue to fuel the growth of this region uh, going forward uh, for the number of years to come. Okay, number five point is our um, technical uh, strong management team and a sizable uh, engineering division. So our company uh, is managed by uh, our founders, which have more than uh, 26 years of uh, experience in the SMT manufacturing uh, industry. And we also have a very dedicated uh, key senior management and technical personnel with extensive experience to carry out the day-to-day uh, -day, uh, operational activities uh, and to basically uh, handle all the customers' uh, requirements. And we currently have 31 engineers and technicians uh, to support these uh, key senior management to undertake all the tasks that is given to them. So section four, uh, looking at our future expansion plan. So a total of 76% of our proceed, which is 44 million ringgit, are uh, earmarked towards the exp uh, capacity expansion and R&D to increase our group capability to cater to the fast growing demand of the ENS sectors. And our total area will expand by 5.7 times, which will enable uh, synergies to develop and market a wider range of manufacturing solutions. So this expansion is actually towards the uh, smart factory solution offering. Yeah. And we also have identified a plot of land in uh, Penang Science Park North. Okay, so we will target to, to do the construction and be completed uh, on the second half of uh, 2023. Yeah. So, uh, with this, the uh, R&D expenditure, we will expand our smart uh, factory uh, solution offering to meet the demand for fully automated solution going forward in the future. Now we come to section five, financial overview. I'll pass this over to CFO, Mr. Gore. Okay, Mr. Gore. Thank you, Mr. Lai. Uh, today, let me bring you all through our financial overview for the past four financial year. For financial year 2018 and 2019 was very good year for Synergen groups. This was mainly due to we secure a smart factory project in Vietnam, which contribute 80 million and 149.4 million revenue respectively. For year 2020 and 21, our revenue dropped. This was mainly due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which our country borders are closed. Although the revenues has dropped, but the revenues contributed from Malaysia had continued growth from financial year 2018 to 2021. So if let's say we exclude the customer K and H uh, for the Vietnam projects for the financial year uh, 18 and 19, our revenue is actually in a growing trend from 2018 to 2021. And our GP margin is very consistent. Uh, over the years, it's ranged from 16% to 18%. And our PAT margins range from 9% to 12%. So uh, the PAT for financial year 2021, amounting to 14.2 million, was after the adjustment of one of IPO expenses of 1.14 million. So, um, I pass it back to Mr. Lai for the presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Goh. Um, we come to the summary for the presentation. So just let us uh, give you a quick uh, wrap up. Um, the point number one to note is that uh, our Kenyan Sea Management has more than 26 years of experience in the SMT manufacturing industries. And with our uh, customer base, um, comprising more than 100 customers who are IDM, OSEP, and EMS primary operating in the ENS industries. 
Point number three for you to take note is that uh, we have an established network of reputable suppliers that offer a wide array of machinery, equipment and tools. And point number four, for our future business uh, strategy, um, we intend to expand our uh, smart factory solution offerings that will further enhance uh, our customers' uh, businesses so that they can actually automate their manufacturing processes towards the uh, industrial for uh, this uh, direction. So uh, with that, uh, this is the uh, final slides for our presentation. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we come to the end of the presentation. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Okay, let's run through some of the questions that they have. Okay, I think one key one question that pop up, I think is uh, what the synergen stands for basically. Is it the the initial of something or the name behind it? Synergen is actually uh, the combined two word to form this uh, this word called synergens. So it derived from a synergy, synergy from from the from the group, and also the uh, convergence, the convergence of knowledge and technology going forward. So this is how we come up with the uh, with the name synergens. Yeah, I think some other questions has popped out uh, from Simon. Why net profit margin down from 12% to 9%? Mm, the net profit margin down is mainly due to the, uh, we paid the stamp duty for the transfer of the uh, shares from SIP uh, owners to SIP uh, to synergens and also some of the uh, increase in the headcount and start costs as well as the uh, GP margin. Uh, the GP margin is actually drops. It's mainly due to the uh, mixture of uh, sales. Okay, going forward, what, what is the indicative range of the profit margin? Are we looking at uh, between, uh, it should be maintained at nine or maybe 10 or 11 or still within this range? Could you provide some bit of a flavor to it? Yeah, it should be around 10%. Around 10%, so okay, we, can, we, can, we can assume 10% going forward, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we some question uh, from Mr. Shinkaja. Integrated solution order book and how much can it grow in FY22 and FY23? Could you be able to disclose that? Or... Uh, if you look at our prospectus, we hit the disclosure. So as that first quarter of 2022, our outstanding order book is actually 68.8 million. So this is it. it will be recognized between the first half of this year. So for app, for any additional uh, audible, it will be updated uh, uh, periodically over the earnings uh, briefing. Okay, thanks. I think we have a question here from Simon. What is the utilization rate in twenty twenty one? I mean, we basically you must understand our business. We are not in production. We are not in manufacturing. So the 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 utilization doesn't apply to us. Uh, for us, because we are pro, uh, we are actually providing services, right? So basically, we are scalable. We can scale up very fast, provided the the supply of machine is available. So for us. Utilization does not apply to our current business now because we don't manufacture anymore at the moment. Okay, I think there's some question here as well. Uh, could you help to break down the two liabilities on prospectus page 177 uh, from Gary uh, UG? Uh, uh. <laughs> Maybe you can skip this, uh, come back to it later. When they... Okay, sure. Yep. Yeah. 177. <laughs> Okay, here. what is your projected CGR moving forward? Does the supply chain issue impact your profit margin? Uh, pardon me? Okay, what is your projected CGR moving forward? Does the supply chain issue impact your profit margin? Supply chain. Uh, the supply chain doesn't impact uh, the profit margin uh, because uh, 
we actually uh, we don't manufacture the uh, the product. We are integrating the uh, the uh, solutions into the productions for our clients. So um, supply chain uh, issue we don't have uh, a direct impact in, in a sense okay? because all the materials uh, cost uh, is actually uh, absorbed uh, by the uh, supplier which is our manufacturers. Yeah? And going forward, uh, we see that there might be some slight uh, delay, uh, I would say in terms of the delivery uh, because of the uh, congestion in the seaport, uh, especially in China right now, where there's, there's, there's a port closure in Shanghai. So a lot of the uh, export containers and everything is unable to move. So there might be a slight delay in terms of delivery to the clients. So the impact is mainly on, on delivery timeline rather than delivery cost. Okay. Does Sinogen see any slowdown in demand for solutions from the EMS providers? Uh, but it's slowdown in terms of... Can you on the... the, 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 uh, what, no, the, volume, the volume, volume, volume higher? Does Sinogen uh, see any slowdown in demand for solutions uh, from the EMS providers? You know that the global economic growth uh, is being lowered, IMF, lower down the, the growth here. Do you see any slowdown in the EMS segment? Uh, currently, we don't see any slowdown on our part here. Okay, uh, one of the reason is because um, the outflow of the uh, from China due to the trade war, um, there's still a very strong outflow from 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 that portion, uh, and it's actually um, been diverted into our region here, especially Malaysia, Thailand, and and Vietnam. And you can see that the foreign the direct investments are still very strong coming into our region here. No doubt, you can see that there's a lot of uh, news flying around after the uh, Ukraine crisis, uh, caused uh, some haywalk in the supply chain and everything. But fundamentally, if you look at the, uh, the demand for electronics, it's still on a very high side, yeah? Because uh, these uh, semiconductors uh, companies, um, especially the wafer fab, are still heavily uh, investing in their capex spending to expand the capacities. And all this, uh, all this capex spending is long-term basis. Okay, if you look at semiconductors, for them to build a factory, it will take them years to, to complete. And once it's complete, they will have to run the production in order to recuperate all this investment. So they basically have, have basically do a projections in terms of the growth. So that's that is where they see the demand is still very strong. That's why all the commitment to build up their new factories are located uh, everywhere in the region right now, you can see, and especially in Penang, uh, we see a tremendous uh, investment coming in from all these semiconductors and advanced packaging uh, company. I think to add on is, uh, if you look at the data coming up from Maida, last year, basically Penang recorded record high, high investment from uh, all this FDI and also the local reinvestment. So we have not seen this for many years and this is a, a, a trend changing uh, what we're seeing going forward for Penang. Yeah, looks like St. Jens is in a sweet spot basically so called right? with all the investments coming in. Every day, I think uh, every other day we see and uh, uh, this is about CTM Electronics and then previously was uh, uh, quite a few of the MNCs are setting up shop in Penang. So do you all face any uh, worker shortage? I think there are always a talent issue in, in Penang. I think uh, from some of the uh, listed corporates we, we, that come on to our webinar, UWC and a few others, they always say that uh, aimless uh, uh, talent is an issue. So does it, do you have to face that kind of issue? Yeah, I think uh, in terms of uh, hiring uh, skilled engineers, um, Actually, if you if you look at uh, Penang, uh, actually every time I went and see my clients, they always have this issue. Anyone to recommend? If you have anyone to recommend to us? Yeah, they are, they are basically hiring, uh, facing some issues in terms of hiring skilled workers. But on our part here, um, uh, one one good thing about the company is that uh, we have very long uh, staff. I mean, basically very long lawyer staff that's worked with us for over the years. So most of them are more than 10 years with the company. And we basically are going uh, on a pace that uh, 
according to our growth rate. And we are hiring uh, dedicated, so I would say dedicated staff um, in the market. So the team that we form up actually are quite uh, senior and they know what they want to do uh, with their so-called uh, career path. So they join us and we actually excel together. Yeah, that's, that's what makes us a bit different from the rest of the, uh, the companies that is located in Penang. So this is something that uh, we are embarking uh, this type of concept and it's been working fine with us until today. Okay, one question here from Shin Tong Chia. How much, how much percentage of revenue is actually from semiconductor industry, is it? I see your top customers are all EMS, not semiconductor. Actually, majority, we didn't, we didn't do a really a breakdown in that, in that segment, but the majority, I would say that that's why we call our company ENS, Electronics and Semiconductor. We didn't call ourselves Semiconductor Electronics. So actually, Electronics, the EMS is actually uh, still the major contributor to the revenues. Yeah. Okay, do you focus on the ESG issue? Do you face the uh, ESG issue currently impacting the EMS industry? No, because we don't hire any uh, foreign workers or our, or our workers are local. And uh, we basically do not have any ESG issues. We are actually helping our clients, which are the EMS companies, overcoming their ESG issues by going automation. Yeah. Okay, then this one question. With the current inflation issue, does the supply increases their price? If yes, will it possible impact coming profit margins or can synergens transfer the higher cost to customers? Um, this will have a uh, both way effect right now. Um, uh, currently, we are seeing the, uh, the increase in prices from our suppliers. And because we don't have a long-term uh, contract with our clients, it's all based on purchase order. So every time uh, when there's a project, we will quote based on the current pricing. Yeah. So if there's an increase in price, then definitely this, this price will be basically quoted to the clients. So. Okay, what is the competition landscape in Malaysia for smart factory solutions that you all are having? That, yeah. Uh, competitions are everywhere. Yeah, not only in Malaysia, we are also seeing a lot of competition for overseas market as well. So for us is that uh, our expertise is basically uh, our know-how. We've been 26 years in the industries. We know uh, what the electronics uh, industry wants in terms of uh, smart factory. And we work closely with our suppliers, with our key suppliers to incorporate uh, certain solutions from them. And also we are innovating some of our local solutions from Synergence itself to be uh, complementary uh, systems and complementary solutions to offer to the uh, clients. Yeah. So for us is that uh, competition is healthy. There's, there's how we learn and how we grow. And we actually uh, are basically developing our own proprietary uh, solutions as well to, to complement each other. Okay, I think someone else. who are your key competitors in Malaysia and globally? Uh, the rest of the uh, equipment suppliers from, from probably from Japan, from uh, US, from Europe. Yeah. Someone asking about, uh, since uh, from Wyman, since you are a service provider rather than a manufacturer, how much revenue can one engineer worker generate typically? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, really, uh, yeah, currently we have what 50, 55, 55 headcounts. But if you take revenue per employee, it's very high right? because we are <laughs> very <laughs> light, <laughs> light, <laughs> light, 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 So you can do the math yourself, is revenue per employer, employee. Right? Okay, I think, are you able to disclose a bit uh, or about the customer ABCD? I think someone is asking. Uh, from here, I think is your is the VS SKP resources are top high your customers. Uh? I think on the, the I think if you look at the prospector, there's a distribution. Oh, US, uh. yeah. yeah, yeah, all US major About, major people. Uh, yeah, eighty percent is actually multinationals. Multinationals, yeah. And and for the record, we don't. 
for Malaysia, we only service uh, Malaysia, safe of Malacca and Johor. So Malacca and Johor is not. Malacca and Johor customers are serviced by Singapore based company. So this is a global service provider. Yeah, I think uh, one, this question, okay, I think, uh, not, uh, do you manage to get the breakdown of the liabilities, I think? Yeah, I mean, the breakdown is consist, uh, the liability is consists of the uh, trade payables, other payables, um, higher purchase payables, and contract liabilities. I mean, the uh, customer deposit that we have received. Yeah, the main, main uh, consists of the, 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 the main, main element of our liability. These are the deposit they, yeah. they, they pay us upfront to secure uh, integration license or machines. How do you secure contracts from new customers? What is the strategy behind? Can you share a bit on that? How do you secure new, new customers? I think you, you, I think you mentioned you got 100 customers, uh, quite diversified. And some of the top five customers uh, make up the chunk of the your, your, your revenue. It's so, how do we secure new customers? Uh, with hard work and dedication. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So, um, with the expansion, I think uh, your, your expansion plans, I think you, you are adding at least about uh, five times your capacity, right? So, um, how do you intend to fill up or, or are they already secured? You have secured the, some of the partial orders or intent from the existing customers or is it meant for new customers? Actually, both. Uh, we, we, are, we need a space in order for us to do the assembly and also to do the uh, customization of, of the solutions to our clients. So currently, the, we are doing a lot of this integration on the customer level and the customer side. We, we are unable to do it at our premise because due to the space limitation. So we foresee that if we were to expand, we are able to uh, cater for more uh, solutions yeah, going forward in the future. So as you know, Penang, uh, we are running out of industrial land. There's not much left. So it's better to, uh, to secure uh, the industrial land so that we can expand uh, further for the future going forward. Yeah, I think there's another there's my question to that. Is it correct to say that if a customer had fully automated their factory, then Synergence will only get profit by providing after sales support to them? Uh, I'm a bit confused with this question. Okay. <laughs> uh, customer, if they have fully automated their factory, if it's fully automated with their, with their factory with our solutions, then we will be servicing them. Uh, offering them the after sales support. Yeah, but if they are not uh, incorporating our solutions or our equipments, then we won't be able to provide them any, any support yeah, in that sense. Your so, so usually for us is that uh, we will understand the customer requirements and then we will work with them to fulfill their requirements and also to study their current uh, configurations of the alliance to see whether their current configuration can meet up with the expectation of what they want in the future. So if they can't, then we will offer them our solutions. But if they can, then definitely they will just they will just make some changes on their current solutions. Yeah. Even, I mean, they are using our competitor solution as well. We, we do offer that type of advice as well. Okay, I think that's question from Weinman. Any plans to go into manufacturing one day and therefore increase your profit margins? Uh, manufacturing uh, of uh, equipment, as I mentioned earlier, we are doing our own uh, proprietary systems so that uh, yeah, therefore we can actually have a higher uh, margin once we go into that. These are smart factory. Yeah, smart factory the offerings. Yeah, I think that's what we share. Any direct or indirect competitors currently listed in Bursa, Malaysia? Currently, they are not listed in Bursa, but they are listed elsewhere around the world. Okay, so I think... Okay, so yeah, I would expect your profit margin to be much higher when integrated solution contribution higher, but why net profit margin flat last four years, I think, from Shinkao Jack? 
Actually, if you look at the profit margin, we are very consistent across across the years because due to the fact that uh, we are offering this, uh, I would say, standard equipments with our own customization solution. So uh, to increase our net profit, definitely we have to go into uh, manufacturing um, all these uh, smart factory solutions. Yeah. So going forward, uh, this is what we plan. That's why we embark on this IPO to. Uh, to have this proceed so that we can utilize it to, to expand further with our product offerings on the smart factory solution. A question from Jackie about, about uh, signing maintenance contracts with your clients. How long each maintenance contract lasts? What is the recurring revenue from the maintenance contracts? Uh, you can see from our prospectus, I mean, in terms of the uh, revenue on, on this sector, uh, we don't have any uh, so-called long-term contracts or maintenance contract with the clients. Um, the clients are free to engage uh, anyone to do their so-called uh, services. But I, would, what I can share with you is that majority of them uh, will come back to us to do it because we are the only certified uh, provider. Uh, we certified by our so-called manufacturers, our partners. Uh, that provide all these uh, services to the uh, clients. And majority of our clients uh, uh, engage us to do their yearly calibration services, uh, yearly maintenance as well for them. And also some cases, they basically send the machine back to our office to do a complete refurbishment. So we basically strip the whole machine down, we, we do the whole uh, fix up all the, all, all the damaged parts or all the worn out parts and we recalibrate it back into the uh, manufacturing specifications. So they can, they can basically reuse the machines uh, for, for a number of years after that. So this type of, these are type of the services that we offer to our clients. For question from Kennedy, do you need the right software? So I believe you mentioned uh, is meant uh, your so smart. Yeah. Factory solutions that you need to come up with the software. Yeah, we have we have our own software team to write our software course. Okay, with this long question here from Gary. Uh, your principal on your website is your customer, or you act as a distributor for them. I'm a little bit confused. I mean, can I understand either you act as a distributor for them and then use their equipment to provide customer provide service to customer? <laughs> uh, with, uh... The question also is a bit confusing. Just let me yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, if you look at our company, right, uh, we are not the manufacturer of equipments. Yeah. So you have, let's say, at the bottom, uh, in our supply chain, you have the uh, equipment manufacturers, and then you will have the EMS companies that is actually using this equipment to run the production, to produce a finished good. So what citizens uh, do is that we are actually in between both of them. So the uh, manufacturers um, equipments, because there's a lot of uh, processes at the EMS. So as you can see, each and every one of the, uh, the names of our suppliers, they are the expert or they are the main uh, players in their respective process. So for instance, you have uh, these uh, screen printers. Um, they are one of the leaders is for ITWA, which is our suppliers. And if you look at the uh, inspection machines, 3D inspection machines, we are representing Koyang, uh, which is from Korea. So all these, all these companies, they're specialized in, in one process. So what we do unique about us in Synergens is that we are able to combine all these equipments to form the entire manufacturing processes that is required by the EMS. So we, we basically become a one-stop solution for them. So instead of them looking for four or five suppliers or six or seven suppliers to form up the production, we basically utilize our strength and our resources in with all the brands that we carry we basically will configure these whole solutions and offer it to our clients as a complete solution. So we don't manufacture it, but we basically uh, customize the process according to the uh, customer's requirement. 
the question is the barrier con barrier high to your industry basically for for you yes it's, mm -hmm. it's high. Yeah. so it's not easy to replicate what you are doing right from, from your local competitors yeah the main competition is there's always around yeah to replicate what we do completely um, it's not easy <laughs> Almost towards the end of the question, I didn't, okay, I didn't ask, so you are basically a trading company. I don't think you are a trading company, you are a solutions provider, right? Smart solution, smart factory solutions provider. So it's not a trading if company. Not, not, if you are a trading company, we are looking at very low single margins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For this one, it's close to 10 to 12%. Yeah. So trading company won't, won't uh, have that kind of margins. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. looks like we have... Answer most of the questions that we have. Anything else uh, the team would like to add before we call it a night? It's a Friday night. I think it's a, everyone is a long day for you all. You had a prospectus <laughs> launch this morning, briefing now for this. I don't want to keep you all too long. Mm -hmm. uh, any any closing comments from the floor? It's uh, One just more question. Thank everyone for taking the time out to. Uh... To participate in this uh, briefing so that i hope uh, i've answered all the questions um, feel free to to uh, drop us an email um, or go to our website to have a look uh, on what we do so that maybe we can pick up uh, we can answer more of your questions if you have and uh, thank you vincent for hosting this yeah so just like to thank everyone and wish everyone a happy uh, raya coming yeah Okay, thank you for your time as well. It's been a pleasure. Good night, everyone. Stay safe. Have a good holiday. Okay. Congratulations. Bye. Bye.